Okay, I've got some uh, Shenzhen uh, goodness here. Uh, so direct from China, it looks like I've got two PC boards. So let's, uh, let's take these one at a time. Uh, let's do this one first. Uh, and see what, what kind of goodness we have. For all you uh, Chinese fluent. Uh, don't know what that says. Hopefully it's not, uh, it's YouTube appropriate. <laughs> uh, these came from Easy EDA. They've been giving me really good prices. Uh, these are the $2, uh, <coughs> two dollars for ten. Oh, and I've got, uh, great, <laughs> I've got discount coupons. Uh, $8 off my first order. Oh, parts order. All right. I don't think I'm buying parts for them. All right. Let's see here. So uh, boards always come vacuum packed in these. Uh, they always come the they always come the same way. They're always in these vacuum things, and I've ordered boards from lots of different vendors, and they all look exactly the same. This tag always looks exactly the same, no matter where you buy them from. Uh, it's interesting. All right, let's see. Get into it. code. All right, so um, this is our, uh, ooh, how many did we get? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, we've got ten boards. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. And we have our arithmetic logic unit here. Let me, uh, let me zoom in a bit. Oh, I'm getting it. Getting the glare off my off my lights here. That's better. Yeah, that's good. All right. So we have um, the arithmetic logic unit up here. We have uh, a bunch of uh, indicators. We have our comparator, uh, less than equal to greater than. Uh, we have a uh, a dip switch uh, with a buffer, and we have a zero. Uh, um, comparator. It looks to see if there's a zero condition and then it sends out a flag if there's a zero. So very nice. Um, these have uh, ground planes on top and this one just worked out that a ground plane on the bottom seemed to be better. Um, silk screen looks good. Yeah, they look great. Well, we'll take a closer look when Chop them up. Let's, uh, let's look at the other package. This one is bigger. And I'm hoping that it's the uh, back plane. Uh, let me uh, get into this box. Okay. Oh, yes, much bigger. Let me uh, show you this. Much, much bigger box. Says the same thing, <laughs> and same coupons. Ah, yes, excellent. This will be fun. This will help a lot. Let's take this out here. This is the motherboard, or the backplane, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be great. She's open. Oh, nice. Definitely the largest board I've ever had manufactured. Um, for two reasons. One is that I love Eagle, but Eagle will only let me do an 8x10 board. And um, so if I want to do a bigger board, I'm kind of stuck using some other program that I won't like. But these boards were so simple. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. These were so simple. They're just 100 mil centers 
Um, interesting, there's no silk screen over there. Anyway, 100, 100 mil centers, and uh, it's 10 wide. And the back, all that is is just stripes of copper. <laughs> Uh, so everything is connected along the first row and second row. Oh, the silk screws on the back. Well, that's interesting. I don't know why that's upside down and backwards. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to use these for is I'm going to use these um, uh, little uh, single inline connectors. And I've been using those for, um, for these uh, registers. So, uh, so I will be able to put the female connector on the motherboard, and then uh, I will be able to put devices anywhere I want, uh, and hopefully, ten inches is long enough to build a whole CPU. And if not, I'll just some jumpers here and I'll have 20 inches of uh, of uh, bus so yeah so this is our data bus and then we'll just be able to put lots of things on the data bus yeah it'll be great excellent I like it so now we'll be able to actually start to wear things up and make things go that'll be great I think we have almost enough parts now to do everything except for the um, uh, the microcode and the clock generation, but we should be able to do by hand uh, address something as a from and then address something else as a to and watch the data jump across. It. So that's looking great. Anyway, big day today. Uh, again, I paid um, uh, uh, two dollars for ten boards uh, for this one. And I paid, I think I paid, I'd have to look, I have to look it up. I think I paid about $35 for these boards. Um, plus shipping. Uh, I think these were on the order of uh, three and a half, three and a half dollars a board. Which I thought was reasonable for the size of the, of the board it is. I had uh, laid out the board and I had about nine and a half inches worth of uh, of board, and I thought, ah, oh, just extend it to ten. And I had to add a couple connectors at the end. And for some reason, they added a silk screen to the other side. I don't know why. <laughs> I was using their. Um, oh, that's what I should mention also is um, uh, I didn't use KiCad or whatever it is um, to lay these out. I actually used the tool that. Um, these guys had uh, easy EDA. They actually have a web-based PC board layout design tool. You don't even have to buy anything; you just use their tool. And um, since this was just an ultimately stupid board, uh, it has one part, uh, the 10, 10 by one connector, and just put a bunch of those on there, and then traces. You know, one trace. Start, stop, done, right? It was just a super, super, super dumb board. And so I just used their tool. Uh, I put some uh, mounting holes at the at the far extreme. Probably put, should put some in the middle. But anyway, put some mountings, mounting uh, holes on the end for some screws. And yeah, very, very simple. I like it. Okay, I separated them in the... Uh, on the bandsaw. So we have uh, the little indicators. Here's all our little LED boards. We've got three, three per board. Those are the same as last time. Uh, let's see, start smallest I guess. Uh, this is the little uh, zero indicator. It has a uh, uh, eight wide input uh, OR gate. And, uh, so I can put that on. It gives me a flag for zero. Uh, this is the comparator, and the way this will be used is it has two, uh, two connectors. So we would take off. We would have two um, two registers, a register and a B register, and then this would 
This would go on top. Maybe I can just kind of fake it here. There we go. Now you get the idea. Um, so we could have a uh, A register, B register. This would give you a conditional flags. And we can still piggyback on uh, other boards, uh, like the monitors. So that's how that works. You can see it in action now. Um, I use this two uh, HC85 parts. Uh, let's see, we have our ALU unit, uh, arithmetic logic unit, and it's the same way. It has a, uh, a two uh, two connectors that will piggyback onto the two registers, so A and B registers, and then the output. Uh, somehow I'll have to have a long long pins that reach down to the uh, to the motherboard. Uh, let's see if I have something I could show you. Here we go. So these are these are a long pin that you can buy, uh, double uh, double. So that that might be able to reach up uh, reach up far enough. Have a, a female connector, and then have this as the uh, have this as the male connector. Yeah, that'll reach. No problem. So I can do that. That'll be good. Um, and then the last board that I have is the um, dip switch board. So it'll use uh, one of these dip switches here, and it'll provide uh, your setting uh, to a tri-state buffer. And so we can put that onto the bus and be able to uh, put a value and uh, and hit the read signal to the uh, to the card and put that value on the bus. So once I get that. Once I, once I get that working, then we should be able to test a lot of these things out. I should be able to input something. We could transfer it to um, the registers. Uh, we could uh, put one value in register A, put one value in register B, and then uh, send that through the A to D. I mean the uh, arithmetic logic, the ALC, uh, and then uh, ALU, sorry. And then uh, we'll have a... Um, indicator uh, directly on the bus so whatever whatever the bus is doing we'll see it um, so if it creates a value then we can read that off to the bus or we could take the contents of the ALU and transfer that to maybe an IO uh, use one of these uh, registers as an IO device so we have a lot to play with now so it's looking good <laughs>